Jamie, hi, Jim Delapine here. I received your email and I want to give you some video feedback here because I think that you you need it and deserve it and I understand that you're not a graphic design major so uh, I'm going to show you a few tricks here. Um, first of all, my comments were that you, uh, regarding the beret and uh, the star, uh, I'm asking you not to do that kind of thing only because you're, you're new to Illustrator and to do that effectively you have to be good at Illustrator because it's hard to draw something specific so um, and you also cannot have any other text aside from upper crust bakery in there so instead of you need to remove fresh local delicious and and also put in the word bakery okay so let me just give you some tips here and, 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 and some suggestions and and I'm going to show you a way you can kind of not cheat, but uh, uh, let's just start with this. What I did was I went in and I did a search in Google for Eiffel Tower, Tower, Tower symbols, okay? Now, I know that you cannot use web art, but I'm going to show you a, a workaround for that. I hesitate to, to tell students that in the beginning only because it's kind of like it, it it's it's not... It, it's limiting okay it's limiting and it also is is not cheating but uh, it, it's a good workaround but um, anyway let's go to images here and for I feel tell symbol symbols and I specifically said symbols so that you get more graphic results okay so a lot of these have a lot you know too much detail in them okay this is actually kind of interesting and this could this is a, a good idea that you could start out with you know uh, it's a very simplified version of the tower and the circle, and this uh, is screaming out for uh, a logo possibility. But let's let me just show you what can be done here. So uh, this is simple, okay? So let me click on this. Although it looks like it has a transparent background, which it does. So now I'm going to right-click on this and copy this, okay? I'll go into Illustrator and paste it. And oops, okay. So this this often happens when they are PNG files, which are files that have a transparent background. So uh, let's see. We're going to do a workaround here. What I'm going to do is uh, go to the snipping tool and and snip or copy this section of the image, just so I can have the image. So I'm going to copy that. That's called the snipping tool. It's in all of the. Uh, it's it's in your computer if you have uh, Windows. Uh, you could just do a search for it. Okay. So uh, well, actually, just go to Illustrator and now I'll paste that. Okay. So there, that pasted whatever I snipped. Okay. So we'll work with that. Now, Illustrator has the option of tr doing what they call an image trace or a live trace. So it can trace an image that you bring in, and it's a very cool cool tool so uh, if I go to window image trace it'll bring up the image trace panel and you can you know if you click on preview you'll see the result of 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 that image in this threshold so if you look at the detail up here and I'm going to uncheck preview uh, well actually it's already uh, so this is the preview at this threshold so I can um, lessen the threshold and get less detail, increase it, and get more detail, so on and so forth. So I'll just leave it in the middle, uncheck preview, and uh, let me see, hit trace, but although it's not going to trace it, uh, I have to go to object, image trace, now, see, it didn't, it, 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 this gets very weird, which is why I hesitate to use it. So let me just delete that and paste that again. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll go to Object, Image Trace, Make and Expand. Okay, that's important. So we have Make and Expand. Now before, let me undo that. Before, this is an image, so it's not a vector image. It's a rasterized image, which means you can scale it. When you scale it up, you'll start to lose quality. So if I look at this in preview mode, uh or outline mode, I should say, it disappears, okay? So you see no vectors and no anchor points that is um, is what you have to have 
with um, with vector images. Okay, vector images, uh, which is what Illustrator is. Illustrator is a vector creating program. It's a vector program. It means that it's based on math, what they call mathematical algorithms, and if you create a shape, you can scale it up 2,000 percent, and it will not lose quality. Whereas if it's a rasterized image like Photoshop, once you scale it up, you start to lose quality. Okay. So that being said, um, I'm now going to live trace this or image trace it, make it expand. Okay. Now, if I go to uh, the preview mode, or outline mode, I should say, I see the shapes, see? And this is all, these are all anchor points which can be edited. All right, so, but you have to do something to this first. So you're welcome to do this. Find an image on Google and image trace it, and then break it apart. Okay, so what I mean by breaking apart is once you have it image traced, you can go to object, ungroup. You have to ungroup it because these are all grouped items, okay? Then if I click away and then come in and select that outline box, I'll delete that. Okay, so you see what's going on here? So now you have something you can work with. So now I can go in, let me just hit, can, um, go back to preview mode. I can select this and I can move any one of these anchor points to edit it. Okay, which means that, I mean, you, you can change it and edit it and do whatever you want to it. So now you have something you can work with as an image. That's not what I would consider a web, web image. And this would be fair ground, so to speak. All right. Um, let's see. What else did you want to, that I wanted to talk about? Um, okay. So, so text. Okay. Let's talk about text. All right. So let me go to the text tool. Um, I mean, you could put text on an arc here, for example. Um, here, let me do this. Uh, first, first, let me just do this. So let me just type out. Uh, upper crust bakery. Okay, so let me just scale that up really quick and easy. Um, I can put this on two lines, so I'll click right before the B, um, hit the backspace to remove that space, and then hit enter to bring it down to the next line, and then I'll select it and then I'll center it. So let me bring, just bring up the character panel. Um, well, the character panel is right here, but you can also, you can center it right here. It makes it simple. Okay. So there now, so now the text is centered. All right. Now, uh, you can, you can do certain things with this. Like for example, if I make bakery upper case on this, so I'll hit the caps lock key and type in, bakery all right I can now put more space in between the characters by doing this I'll highlight it go to the character panel let me drag it out so it's easier to see and right down here this area here is called tracking okay I can um, click on the, on the drop down menu here and I can select any one of these and as I select it you can see what happens here all right it instantly opens it up it doesn't increase the size but it just increases the space in between so let me just select 200 and then I can increment it up by hitting this up arrow key if I hold it keep my cursor down it just keeps opening up opening up and I'm trying to align this left and right so I have that okay so I have that look right now which is kind of nice um, I can select upper crust and let's see I'll, ch I'll select I don't know, um, a, a script font, um, you know, you'd probably want to choose something, and you can see the immediate updates right here, um, yeah, let me just drag this to the side here, whoops, whoa, hey, uh, let me just drag this to the side here, so now you can see, all right, so if I choose script font, um, oh, I didn't have it highlighted. See, you have to have it active. So let me just do this. Okay, so once you do that, you can immediately get a preview of the text. See what you like. I mean, you do something. Do you want something heavy like this so that it's it's evenly heavy? You know, you don't want something light. Um, 
you know, like, like for example, um, let me go back to the scripts, SCR, and so you have a, see, like something like this, actually this is not bad either, but something like this would be too light, okay, that's too light, it should even out, it's just kind of hard to read, it's nice, it's fancy, but, okay, um, again, I forgot to highlight it, um, this is kind of nice too, alright, but let's, let's just, um, go back to this, okay, so let me highlight this, so I'm going to copy this, and I want to show you another option with regards to arcing text, okay, uh, I will go to the ellipse tool and click and drag. And if I hold down my shift key, I'll, 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 as I'm dragging, I'm going to get a, a perfect circle. All right? So let's just do that. Okay. So now that circle is filled with black and covering up everything because it was drawn after the tower. So it's covering up the Eiffel Tower. So let me just fill this with red so it's easier to see what I'm talking about. See, so now if I move this aside, you can see the tower underneath. So what you could do is uh, um, center, the, center the both of them. Well, let me see. Let me just place this in the back. Okay, so object, arrange, send to back. All right, so it's behind the tower. And now I will select both and just show you this as an option. And go to the align panel. If you don't see it, just go to window align. Okay. And then I will align this mathematically. Um, it says horizontal align. I call it vertical, but but there you go. But notice there's another piece here from when we when we image traced it. That's that's here. So let me just select that and get rid of that. And now we have a, a hole in here. So so you have that. But that's really not why. Um, I'm just showing you things as we go along here. Okay. Um, I want to talk about. Um, putting the text on an arc, okay, so I'll select this circle, and that will be the arc, okay, so I have the text already copied into my clipboard, I'm going to go to the text tool, hold my cursor down on that, and select type on a path tool, so once I let go with that, notice now my circle is active or selected, and now I'll just click on the path, and then um, that automatically comes up, and then I'm going to paste that type that I've had before, which is upper crust, into that. Okay, so now it automatically comes in on in an arc, but <laughs> it looks weird. So what you have to do is guide this around to the top. So if I go to the direct selection tool, you know, I see these funky arrows, and this is where it gets a little weird. All right, so I'm going to go to this line here, and click and start dragging, and uh, I'm going to spin it up. Okay. Sometimes, it, 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 you know, it's so sensitive that if you click wrong, it'll go underneath. If you click here, see, it goes down there. So you have to kind of like really just be play with it, right? All right, and just be delicate with it. Okay. And I'll I have it there, and I'll let go now. Okay. So now I will go in there and. Highlight it, and I can now change the character. I can make it uh, um, bold. Okay, I can increase the size of it. Um, you know, which is you know something you want. You want it to be red. Okay, so I'm just showing you different options. Um, the beret. Okay, you, you like the beret. You like the star. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not showing you how to design something. I'm just showing you how to work with the tools, okay, in a simplified way um, to, for graphic symbols and, and so on and so forth, okay. Um, you chose a beret. Let's, let's do this. Let's go back to Google and type in beret and we'll see what comes up, all right? Maybe we can do something with that. Let's see. E -E -R -E -T -R. I have to spell it correctly, though, first. Uh, Okay, so we'll do a search for that, um, and that's not what I wanted, <laughs> uh, let's see, beret symbols, okay, 
that's not what I wanted either. How about beret? Yeah, the research words are important. How about beret pictograms? P I C T. Okay, let's try that. There we go. Now we're talking. All right, and uh, this kind of reminds me of, of uh, another student's uh, work. Uh, let's see. So, I mean, this is also a way to get ideas, you know, that's kind of interesting. I mean, this actually looks very French, you know. Um, somebody else used this mustache and hat. I don't know if it was in this uh, class or the other class I teach, the same one. I teach two of them. So, um, let's see. I'm just looking for a very ge generic beret. Actually, this one looks interesting, okay? So, let's, let's choose this, all right? Now, this is also... I have a feeling this is not going to work, and we're going to get the same results. So let me copy it and paste it. And okay. And now I will go to Object, Image Trace, make it expand, and that that worked. Okay. So now I will ungroup it. Okay. And then break it apart by selecting the outside box and hitting delete, okay? And now, there we go, we have a beret, okay? What can we do with this? We could, um, let me see here. These are two separate elements, so let me just, I see, actually you can only use, you don't only have to use one, you know, which is actually not a bad idea. Um, let's just do this, I'll hang it on, on the Eiffel Tower, all right, which, you never know. I don't know. Um, let me see. If I rotate here, I can create a rotation point. If I go to the rotate tool, if I click here, it will rotate around that point. Okay? See what I mean? So you can kind of make it look like it's hanging on the Eiffel Tower if you want. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what else to suggest, but I, I just hope that helped, okay? All right, Jamie. Okay, take care.